McGraw Millhaven on KTRS. All right, 912, Big 550, KTRS. Yesterday, if you listened to the show, we made a bit of a stink about this uh, Fifth Ward polling place. It's becoming a bit of a bigger story after we called attention to it uh, yesterday. Earlier on the show, well, Michael Goldie tweeted a picture of uh, giant Hubbard signs inside the Fifth Ward in the city of St. Louis on Election Day. Uh, while people go and vote at this ward, uh, owned by one of the candidate's families. Not only me making the stink, because that's where I go and vote, but Michelle Hutchins Medina, uh, who is running opposite Tamika Hutchins, uh, Tamika Hubbard, is uh, also questioning that. She was out front of the this polling place uh, earlier today, and she makes some... Um, Interesting allegations and some interesting comments. So what we're going to do is replay a portion of this interview from earlier today. This is Michelle Hutchins Medina standing outside the Carr Square Community Center on, uh, I think it's Bithel, just uh, north of uh, City Museum, just north of Washington Avenue in the city of St. Louis. So this is from earlier today. Today's election day, and uh, I live in the city, I live in the Fifth Ward, and I'm going to be voting today. And it came to my attention uh, the last day or two that um, I will be voting for either Tamika Hubbard or our next guest, Michelle Hutchins Medina, who is uh, a candidate for the Fifth Ward. Fifth Fifth Ward. Michelle Hutchins Medina, welcome to KTRS Radio. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I sure am glad when this election's over with because as much as I love all of your mailings to my uh, mailbox, I'm not going to mind not having those any- anytime soon. I totally get that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I made a stink on the show yesterday. It, it came to my attention that the fifth ward in the city of St. Louis has four precincts, and these four precincts are going to be held at the Carr Square Community Center. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. I sit outside of the Carr Community Center at this moment. We've been here since 6 a.m. I'm just trying to monitor the activity because obviously um, with the family using this as their their campaign headquarters, this is where their watch party will be held tonight. Um, All the people who work here um, are, are employed by... Uh, the Hubbards, and so obviously it's a place where we need to pay a lot of attention to to make sure there's no irregularities. Okay, so this Carr Square Community Center is the campaign headquarters for your opponent. Is the um, what did you say? It's it's also what is it also? They're they're going to have their watch. Party. Oh, the, their 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 watch party. So it's the head ca- it's the headquarters. They're going to have their watch party. Everybody there who is an employee is employed. Uh, by your opponent's family? Correct. And four precincts in your district go and vote at a building that is owned by your opponent. Isn't it unconscionable? How is that, how is that legal? You know, that's a really good question. Um, I would not be the first candidate that has addressed this as, as a problem down at the Board of Elections. Um, I went as early as October to uh, talk to them about this, and, uh, you know, they said, well, they had to get through the November election, um, and once they got through the November election, they would address it. I followed up again in January, um, and just really there hasn't been much uh, much response. I mean, the city just completed a $70 million renovation of a library that is a half a block from where I live. Why do I have to go to the Carr Square Community Center, which is, what, a mile, mile and a half from, from where I live? Well, the library is actually in Ward 7. It's not in Ward 5. Oh, so, well, go figure. Yeah, but, that's a, but that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there are a number of different facilities that, uh, that could be uh, utilized. I was told by the Board of Elections that they were asked to reduce their polling location some time ago. Um, and that's why uh, Carr Square has become so prominent in the election process. Does the, do, does, does the Board of Elections pay the 
polling places to open up? You know, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go and vote for either you or your opponent in a building that is owned and operated and run by your opponent. Yes. Her father is the executive director of the Car Square Tenant Management Association. Car Square Tenant Management Association uh, manages uh, all of these properties here um, at Car Square Village. Wow. Um, and, you know, they're kind of they, – they have their own rules. So, you know, you have a – we're sitting out here. They have a uh, – handicap uh, accessible ramp where Senior Hubbard has parked his van in front of it. The police have asked them to move it. There was a, a bunch of ruckus, including the older woman, who said, well, told the police, well, no, you'll have to, you know, you'll have to wait. Someone's going to move it shortly. I mean, it's, it's the most, most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. So they, they parked the van so the handicapped people can't get to the ramp? Exactly. You know, and, and then instead of just realizing that, okay, this is, this is, we made a mistake, we should move it, you know, they, they you know, well, I'm not moving it. I'm not moving anything. You know, it's just ridiculous. It's just crazy. Uh, are, are, there, are there Hubbard signs illegally placed at the polling place? There are some signs that we have called into the Board of Elections and asked for their uh, rovers to come over because there are some large signs that we believe have been placed um, uh, in, in you know, in my estimation, they are closer than the 25-foot uh, uh, limit. Right. But uh, I went and got my measuring tape, but someone thought it wouldn't be a good idea for me to, to measure it myself, so we called the Board of Elections. <laughs> Michelle Hutchins Medina, if I wear a Michelle Hutchins Medina uh, badge or pin or bumper sticker uh, to this, 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 this polling place, or your su- supporters do, uh, are you worried for their safety or worried something might happen to them? Um, I would just say that we have we have experienced some intimidation here, just a lot of loud talking and, you know, saying very uh, negative, inappropriate things. Um, but we will not be thwarted. You know, we are here to make sure that the voters um, and supporters have a uh, – have a, you know, have the right experience when they come to cast their vote. And um, but it's certainly something that I think post this election, this really needs to be addressed. And I appreciate uh, uh, the media bring, bringing attention to this because I think that's what has to happen. As I mentioned before, I'm not the first candidate that has gone and uh, and talked to the board of elections about this, but there hasn't been uh, much response. Michelle Hutchins Medina, what media outlets have brought this to the attention of the the, the voting public? Well, I know KMOX has. Right. Um, I know uh, you guys, and b- besides that, there, there may be a few. There may be a few others that I'm not aware of because, right. as you can, it's been, I've been a little busy. Uh, but uh, when did when did KMOX bring this to the to the public uh, attention? I want to say yesterday, and mm, they actually pr- have someone that's down here now. They probably did it shortly after I ranted on the show yesterday, so they probably listened to this show <laughs> and then and then sent somebody down there. Maybe so. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what happened, to Michelle Hutchins Medina. Let's <laughs> let's 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 call it for what it is. They listened to this show. I brought it up, and then all of a sudden they got smart and decided to send somebody down there because it was a story. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm just grateful that it's getting the attention. We've also uh, reached out to the League of Women Voters to uh, talk about it, uh, you know, with them, because it's definitely something that needs to be needs to be looked into. Right. And if I just told you the stories that I hear out here on the street about how this family uh, operates in terms of corruption and, and intimidation. Uh, it would, it I think it is just unconscionable that the Board of Elections, that their job is to make sure that voters have a, uh, a fair experience. And uh, this clearly doesn't meet the, the bill there. That is Michelle Hutchins Medina from earlier uh, today. She is running for Fifth Ward Alderman. And uh, she's claiming, this isn't me, this is her voter intimidation at the Fifth Ward, where... Four precincts are voting for her or her opponent, Tamika Hubbard, but yet the, the the entire building is owned and ran by her opponent's family. 
And she's she's call, she's flat out saying there is voter intimidation going on in the city of St. Louis today. Not to mention that she also said when public officials are asking people to move cars so that you can uh, get to the uh, handicapped ramps, they're telling the officials no. I- I'm sorry, as a voter and a taxpayer of the city of St. Louis, the St. Louis Board of Elections has failed. They have failed me as a voter, and they have failed everybody else who is a resident of the city of St. Louis. It is despicable. It's despicable that um, you in 2013 cannot go and vote without threats of intimidation. Um, The Board of Elections should hang their head in shame. Four precincts, one, two, three, but four of the eight? And this was clearly, according to this interview, this was brought up to them months ago. And and uh, don't worry about it. It's outrageous. It is outrageous. 314-969-KTRS, 1-888-550-KTRS, or star KTRS. Those are the phone numbers. We'll come back, take a couple phone calls. 923 here on the Big 550 KTRS.